It's Diversification. Okay. It's saying you must diversify yes. your investment portfolio. What's up, guys? Jeff and Jeremy here. Another episode of Five Minute Fatherhood. Today, we're talking about investing advice from Solomon. Ancient wisdom. Does the scriptures have anything to say about that? It does, which I think is really fascinating. Solomon, this was something that was very important to him thinking about the long-term goals financially, how to set up his assets, how to do all these different type of things and how to set up his household was really important. Um, and so yeah, Jeremy, what are some of these ones? I, the one I see right here where it says the verse, it says, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. I have no idea what that means. So I'm really interested to hear what that means. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But yeah. All right, so guys, what, what this, this is, <laughs> what is he talking about? Let's go throw bread on water. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a I'm little more like, nuanced because I have that. little kids, but I'm thinking like the ducks. You know, that's like we're always throwing bread in the water with the ducks and with the little kids. Yes. So like something there. Yeah, take your kids to the park and feed the ducks. Yes. Um, no, what it's talking about, you guys, and this is, I, I think this is the, the absolute, like if, if somebody had to ask, what is the best advice the entire Bible has about investing? I would say it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses one and two. So yeah, like Jeff said, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. What does that mean? He explains it in verse two. Give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. I Mm. love this advice. Diversification. It's saying you must diversify your investment portfolio later in your life. That's what he's saying. Now, uh, I love the, the basic advice that you concentrate your wealth to build. You concentrate your resources to build wealth. You diversify your resources to keep wealth. And so I do think that there's really two stages to this process. Um, but you need to get to the second stage, which is you need to begin to accumulate enough resources so that you can do what Solomon's saying here, cast your bread upon the water, which is to make sure that you have a several different places where you can get your income from when bad things happen. And you know the Jewish people have a way of thinking about this because obviously they've gotten this advice for, for a long time, but they also have much longer memories. They, they know that disaster comes. They know that a lot of times you're like, I'm doing great today. I could only survive like three weeks if something bad were to happen. Like Jewish people know like something bad's going to happen. Like we've totally. been around a long time. Our memory goes back thousands of years. And about every 80 years, some terrible disaster tends to strike almost every culture, whether it's a depression or a war or something. And so they're always thinking and planning for that. And one of their strategies is the they put a third into businesses because they want their wealth to grow. When there's boom times, they put a third into real estate because they want their assets to be secure during bust times. And they put a third into savings because they don't know when they'll need to leave the country suddenly uh, or uh, because some crazy thing's happening. So um, again, Solomon's saying that there's a time in your life, and you guys, again, most of you are not in this season, but you need to think about this season because it's coming. Like you need to be begin to concentrate your resources, build them up during boon times or big opportunities, but make sure you're saving enough and you're creating multiple income streams. So our family has four or five different uh, income streams. And so I think that, and that's been something we've been really trying to figure out, how do we diversify? Um, but it's right there in Ecclesiastes 11, cast your bread on the water. I love that that image, you know, as weird as it is, like that's how it sticks in your mind. That's how ancient people used to create that. But do we have a visitor? Who's that? We do. Canon, Canon, can you say hi? Hi. Here, let me turn hey, off bud. my earpiece so so Uncle Jeremy can maybe uh, maybe hear you when you talk. Here we go. There we go. Can you can you hear him now? Are you there, Jeremy? Yeah. There he is. Can you hear is him? He saying hi. Yeah. What's um, up, Cannon? Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, he always uh, this 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 is what happens, guys, when you work from home and you forget to lock the office door. But he's so sweet. He wanted to. <laughs> you guys just woke up. We shoot these early in the morning. One last note I'll put on this this episode, and and it reminds me of even kids teach your kids to invest. Like investing is one of those things yeah. we don't teach till they're like 30, right? You know, until they're older. When, uh, and and I, I think we do, a lot of us do a good job with money with our kids. You know, we I, the, the three classic buckets is what? It's like, t- it's like save, give, spend, right? Is sometimes what we'll teach our yeah. kids. But I say put one in there that's invest. And one way that we kind yeah. of are just about to start experimenting with it now that we're just starting to kind of talk with money with our five-year-old and stuff is um, in a more detailed way is, you know, like, hey, here's $5 or here you earn $5 every time this $5 stays in this little jar, every month, another dollar is going to get added to it. Right. And teaching some type of investment or compound or something like that. Like, do you do this? No, I said, we're just about to start this year. That's my plan. Oh my gosh. I've never heard of this. This is a great idea. I've been writing it out and kind of like, think, you okay? What happened? (laughs) Oh, did you get stuck under the table? 
<laughs> sorry, oh, bud. Sorry, buddy. Um, <laughs> but uh, I tried to scoot in and then I realized he was on top of me and I think I just like scraped the top of his thigh. But you know, you win some, you lose some. But yeah, I think something like that, I'm just like in adding investing to the like, the non-negotiable strategies for financial competence for your kids is really important. And that's a really easy one, what I just said there, of like adding a dollar a month if they hold on to a certain amount. Because not only does that teach them investing and interest, compound interest, but what that also does is I think teach them like delayed gratification, which is really, really important at that age. So wow. I would say, yeah, that. That is and then a great idea. That. Yeah, and then extending <laughs> that, that even into yourself, into adulthood and, and learning these from Solomon. So that's what I would say.